Good morning, brothers and sisters. It is uh, Sunday for uh, 18 in the morning. It is a glorious time to be up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, I wanted to share um, a thought. Maybe spur some of us on, including my myself. Um, Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord that you are working and moving in us to own to work according to your good pleasure uh, so um, this morning I've just been meditating on the word I've been going through a, a book by dear brother Leonard Raven Hill called uh, Revival Praying and in this chapter chapter 14 be ye angry um, he was uh, just going through about the command that that command that we're given in the Bible to to be angry and not sin. Um, but he was uh, kind of uh, using that uh, verse in the sense of uh, being angry at the state of the church in the sense of uh, rampant ravenous sin yes and also uh, in the world around us the culture around us uh, in such a fashion not to be angry in, in the condemning and judgmental sense but in the sense of which uh, leads to a righteous anger that can be used as a powerful tool, let's say, or powerful uh, motivating or invigorating force uh, for fierce intercessory prayer. That is um, uh, what I've been meditating on, is righteous anger is used as a powerful uh, let's say tool or uh, invigorating force to, for fierce intercessory prayer and uh, I think we have to look well to the ways of our master in this as we um, try to um, understand the role of righteous anger in intercessory prayer and I think it's a uh, simple uh, yet profound uh, something that shouldn't be drummed up in the flesh because that's not going to produce anything it's not going to last it's just going to get you riled up uh, but let's look to uh, Yeshua Jesus um, as we ought to in all things uh, this is in Matthew chapter 21 verse 12 Starting in verse 12, it says, uh, Yeshua Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who sold and bought in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those <clears throat> who sold doves. Uh, 13, verse 13, he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And uh, John actually records for us a little more about what happened here and he says that uh, Yeshua Jesus he made a whip of cords and that he drove them out and the disciples saw this and they said in verse 17 it says that they remembered that it was written zeal for your house will consume me and my question is is the zeal for God's house consumed us as it filled us with righteous anger not for the not in the sense of, of judging your brother or your sister or the church and saying oh look how filthy and dirty you are you do this 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 but but we ourselves are are um, you know guilty of of other sins and, and vices that we are unrepentant of not not in that sense we we need to be 
uh, right with the Lord ourselves, yes, and in right relationship with Him. Uh, just as a dear brother was um, sharing with me, that uh, once we're right with God, all things kind of fall into place. Um, there is a righteous zeal that ought to be consuming us. First, in our own selves, the Holy Spirit's going to work with us first. He's going to work on us first. He's going to deal with us first. And then so share His burden with us regarding the things that He sees that troubles Him. And yes, it vexes God. He does not delight or take pleasure or wink at um, sin. He doesn't. And we shouldn't fool ourselves in thinking that He does. His grace towards um, sin and sinners does not mean that He is somehow uh, okay or understands um, our sin, that it's as sort of, sort of a license for us to uh, live in it or to just pass it off. And um, I think that if we can catch the heart of what Yeshua is saying here, um, it will help us to better intercede for the state of the church, the state of our nation, the state of the world, the culture around us, all of that. And uh, so to, to, to get that, uh, I just want to read where Jesus is quoting when he says that my house is a house of prayer, um, but you have made it a den of robbers. First, we're going to go to Isaiah 56. And this is where Jesus quotes that. He says, I'm going to start in verse 6. It says, Also the sons of the foreigner who join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants to everyone who keeps from polluting the Sabbath and takes hold of my covenant, even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Okay. And then turning to uh, Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 11. Jeremiah says this. Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 9. Shall you steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense to Baal, and walk after gods whom you do not know, and come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered? so that you may do all of these abominations? Has this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Certainly, even I have seen it, says the Lord. God sees sin that is done in secret. Everything is open to the eyes of him to whom must give account. And this happens, yes, even in the house of God, maybe even right under our nose for the, for pastors. Um, they, they have to deal with this, this all the time. Other leaders in churches, they have to deal with this all the time. And sometimes, yes, it's even the, the pastors who are, uh, you know, um, at fault for this and who let this go because they themselves have sin in their lives and they themselves... Uh, don't want to turn from it. And so the cycle goes and, you know, just leads people further down a ditch and into a greater spiritual bondage. And this ought to break us, break our hearts, because it breaks God's. And we, we know this. We don't need to be looking at every pastor in the pulpit and, and thinking, you know, oh, is there some sort of secret sin in their life? Or, or some, or something along those lines. Uh, but what we ought to do, because we know it happens, we know it's out there, we see it, 
we have to pray. We have to pray and intercede. We have to, as Jesus came to do, he came to destroy the works of the devil. He, he's, he does not like the works of the devil. The devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy. He, Jesus hates the works of the devil. And we ought to hate the works of the devil. Righteous anger burned in Yeshua, Jesus, for the works of the devil against the works of the devil when he drove out those money changers from the temple who were extort they were, were really it was extortion they were extorting the people and and, and other and, and and other things but what I want to draw on is is that it was the righteous anger and the zeal for God's house that motivated Yeshua Jesus to cleanse the temple and so we're even told that the Spirit of God yearns jealously for us. Jealously for us. And Paul makes the astounding statement that if anybody destroys the temple of God, God will destroy that person. And so with a righteous anger and zeal, for God's house, for the for his people, for yes, even the lost. We need to pray fervently and incessantly. All the more. And I it's my prayer for myself and for all of you and for all of the body of Christ to rise up with a righteous zeal in anger and press in with fervent intensity in intercession for the body for the temples to be cleansed glory hmm. thank you Lord Father we thank you for your word this morning Lord I pray that you would inspire each of us with your holy righteous zeal Father that you would break our hearts and our if lord if, if 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 any of us had been indifferent or passive regarding any type of um any type of sin lord that they have seen or witnessed in in the church or maybe even in themselves lord i just pray that you would forgive us as you are faithful and just to forgive, Lord, and that you would change our heart. Lord, that we would be burdened with that which burdens you. Lord, that we would be so inclined and driven to, as your word says, to pray without ceasing with all prayers and supplications. For the saints, for your body, the church, and for the lost, the dying, the hurting. Those are held in cruel bondage by the works of Satan. Teach us how to pray in these matters, Lord. Teach us not just to pray, but teach us how to intercede. Father, train our hands for war and our fingers for battle, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Father, we bless your name. We just thank you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. In Jesus' name.